Hello, everybody, and welcome to this scary video, where today we are going to talk about... Uh, th this is a weird topic to broach, but we are going to talk about having a stalker and shit like that. And we're, we're actually... This is going to be another one of those reading the comments videos but there was a really good comment in here. It's really funny because I had never even thought about talking about something like this, like ever. Like, I mean, I've, I know like, especially in some of the member streams lately, I brought up little things here and there, but um, I noticed a comment as I was, just like checking to see how many comments there were to see if I could do another video like this. And this comment like jumped out at me and I was like, oh shit. And so I started thinking about what it said and I realized that I don't want to say I've been lucky enough, but I've been um, lucky enough to be in a few different forms of media that would maybe bring something like that. And in thinking back on stuff, I noticed that there are very different types of behavior. But the other thing about this is, is that you don't have to be an artist or anything like that to end up having someone stalk you. And, and, and like, there's probably a ton of girls right now watching this going, yeah, no shit. There are certain things that we are gonna be talking about right now. But I just, I, I really want to nail that and talk about it and give you guys some tips in hopes that at least you could lessen the risks, I guess is the best way to put that. Okay, so so let's get into some comments, and then um, when we get to that one, we will talk about it to some greater detail, I guess. So let, let's move over here. All right, so let's see here. Oh, this is from Adam Gary Poetry, and this was like our first little interaction here, and I didn't even like reply, because again, I don't do the replies until after we do this, but um, he hit me up on Instagram, and as you guys know, I was just on his fucking channel the other day. Um, and I want to really thank Jeff from the Garage Poets um, on connecting us there. But that's another thing, too. If there are channels that you think um, I would have a good uh, conversation with or anything like that, hit them up or hit me up and tell me about them. And um, I'll try to set something like that up because that was a really good talk we had. Um and there's more to come, so that'll be great. Next one is from Deb. And th what one? Oh, that was on the comments video. Haha, <laughs> you know, I think that's supposed to be us. You know, us Canadians, we need to live vicariously through your nice weather to get through the winter. Yeah, you know, like, this is where I go back and forth with that whole thing that, like, nature will tell you if it hates you and wants you to die. And by people who... Like, just like, yeah, I'm going to live in the snow, in a blizzard, and all this other stuff, because this is, like, life. No, that's not life. Like, don't do that to yourself. And also, don't move to the desert where the elements are trying to kill you. And it's like, you don't belong here. Like, I'm going to murder you, says nature. Go to somewhere where if you, if anything drastic were to happen, and, like, you lost power or you didn't have a house anymore, that you could go outside and not be fucking killed by nature. That's that's kind of human existence, okay? When Darwin was putting together survival of the fittest, I don't think Darwin was like, oh, this thing over here could definitely live as long as it you know, could get a bank loan, maybe get a 30-year fixed mortgage on a... Mm, yeah, and all this other fucking shit. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking out my ass right now. I, I just prefer to live somewhere where I know I can survive if I had to. And worse came to absolute worse. But Deb, thanks for the comment. <laughs> I was so fucked up. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, and then we got some birthday wishes. Thank you, Ethan. And then Lauren says, uh, 
not psychic. I wanted nice weather because it was rainy in Maryland. Yes, I've tried coconut water before and didn't like it. Then again, coffee is superior to all other beverages. I agree. Like, I love coconut water, but I don't have 17 cups of it a day. Great advice on getting more sales on poetry books. Thank you. Ah, uh, poor Beeb. I feel like no one ever taught him how to make friends. Yeah, it happens. Thanks, Adam. Um, and then Ethan on the interview with Shaylin says, Great interview. Congratulations, Shaylin. Are you in a scene or school with Chris Childers? Um, that is very cool. I'm looking forward to his book of translations. Um, I think he lives in Baltimore, I want to say. I'm pretty sure uh, Matthew Buckley Smith hooked them up somehow. Or maybe he just was talking about him and she reached out to him about the event. Oh, let's see here. Jess! Uh, sometimes I forget to come out of stealth mode in life. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, um, I do that too. Um, as followers of the channel know, like I kind of took some time off uh, recently and just wasn't putting up as much stuff as I uh, normally would. Stealth mode is real. And if any of you out there have realized, oh, you know what? I haven't talked to like the majority of my friends in the last X amount of weeks or months or whatever. Um, it's a good possibility you're in stealth mode and you might want to lift the shields and just like say hello to some people. Julia, happy birthday, dude. Thank you. Oh, that was a fun day at the beach. I miss it already. A nice day out. Jealous. I was at work says Lauren. Yeah, you know what? Um, in counting blessings and all, like when it's a beautiful day out, I realize I'm like, oh shit, most of the people in the country, fuck, most of the people in the world don't get this kind of shit. So like count your blessings, guys, when, when you have them. Happy birthday, nice umbrella. Yeah, that umbrella is pretty nice. I got it from the same kind of guy who was walking by selling stuff. Um, probably about two years ago, maybe three years ago. I don't know, I just, I keep it in my car all the time in case I'm at the beach. It's a very sunny disposition umbrella. And you know what's even funnier? This sounds so stupid because it's just a fucking umbrella, but in photos, that umbrella fucking pops like crazy. Like when you take a picture and you have that umbrella and the ocean, it like just like 10 X's your fucking photos. <laughs> so stupid oh my gosh <clears throat> oh and we have something else from the beef here on the um beach video let's see let, let, let me let me read the ejaculation here um they are watching you duda your secret must be known the bird has flown from inside your phone and left you alone as you lie prone on your throne like a tombstone, waiting for the wishbone, hoping it's some badass homegrown that will give you some high tone and resurrect the cyclone and death dethrone, sorry, the backbone. All the best, oh my brother. So yeah, so there you go. Um, there is uh, a wonderful uh, Dr. Seuss verse on that. So thank you for taking the time. Uh, let's see, Lauren says, and this is on the Anarchy Crew thing. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, Lauren was looking forward to it. Adam was there too. Yeah, the chapbook and the hour thing is kind of fun. Um, I don't know. I like deadlines and I like... Um, doing stuff so maybe we'll do that one of these days here and this was on fixed writer self-sabotage part six tempest miller says feel like i have legit just started experiencing the come down in the last 45 minutes oh no is that a good thing or a bad thing it sounds like a bad thing yeah i've really noticed that there's a ton of pisces people out in the world all of a sudden not all of a sudden i maybe i just never fucking care to ask but yeah there there were a lot of birthdays in the last few weeks here. Um, Lauren says, I hope you do more like this. So much great insight. 
dropping all the truth bombs. Steph can see how it trusted to other aspects in life. I think when we have success, we are quick to jump onto the next thing and not relish in the accomplishment. Yeah, I, I can't. I'm very, very bad at that. And then Lauren has a couple other things here. Every time your voice goes up in a pitch, it sounds like Bane from Harley Quinn. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had that talk before. We've had that talk before. Uh, stop and ask what would Matt do? Yeah, get the fucking bracelets out, guys. WWMD. Yeah, let's, let's make that a thing. Oh, David Novak Poetry says on that same video, people don't talk enough about how difficult success is to deal with. As you said, most of, up, most of us develop strategies for failure and those lead to growth. Well, I, I see what you're saying. Like if you develop strategies for failure in case it shows up, that's how you lead to growth. Yeah, okay, I understand what you're saying now. You have to not anticipate failure, but be prepared in case that comes and that's how you grow. Oh, and then that was on the stream. Yeah, that was so much fun. Uh, let's see, and this is J.J. Stewarton. Part six, what the hell, Matt? I'm away for a few days, and now I have to find part one and work my way through. Uh, oh, dude, I didn't make the fucking playlist. Okay, I'm going to have that playlist up because oh, this is coming out on Thursday. So on Friday, the um, abridged version that's going to be a podcast episode of all the videos will be going up, but I need to put the link for the... Um, playlist for just those videos. So I will do that. Well, I hope it was helpful for you. Adam says, good shit, everyone. Yep, it was, it was, it was. Michael says, thanks for this so much. So much of what you said I felt was speaking to me and the way I self-sabotage. Years of telling myself I'm not good enough or worthy definitely plays a role in why I start something, get going, then quit. Yeah, but honestly, I'm not trying to be funny about this. Self-awareness is the strongest fucking tool that anybody could have. So the fact that you have seen this means you are way more likely to get away from that now. Now that you are aware that that is something that has happened. So pat yourself on the back for being self-aware. And if any of you guys are watching this are like, I don't know if I have self-awareness, that means you probably don't. But the fact that you said that question out loud, I don't know if I have self-awareness, that shows that you are capable of being self-aware because you are now analyzing yourself. So now that you have that, move forward with that and see how that goes. So this is Chasey over here. Oh, and this was from the Anarchy Crew Zoom thing. Matt, I love your coffee poem. It's now my favorite ever poem of yours. Aw, I saw it happening in my head like a, is that a quick time movie? Oh, Quentin Tarantino movie. We'll, we'll say Quentin Tarantino, even if you met QuickTime. We'll, we'll say we'll say Quentin. Or more recently imagining it happening to a mad classical musical soundtrack as the opening scene to a Guy Ritchie series. Holy shit. I've been watching too much of The Gentleman on Netflix. My favorite pieces of your poem were the sun glaring through the smudged windscreen at the beginning and the cigarette kissing your lips near the end. Awesome. Thank you so much. Maybe that should be added into the repertoire of my readings. And then Cheryl, hello, Cheryl, says um, the lips and asshole of, of the pineapple. Ha ha ha. Yeah, seriously, that Trader Joe's haul I did, that, that whatever the fuck that was, it was disgusting. And I don't know how someone could take something so beautiful and amazing like a pineapple and make it taste like fucking shit. Do not understand that. And then MJ, hello, MJ, says, what the... Okay, so you were in a dream last night, promoting writing and creativity. I was in Los Angeles, but a group of us were traveling to France because of healthcare and education issues in the USA. Sounds about right. Um, write that poem, Matt. Uh, P.S. Get out of my head. Yeah, me and MJ, we've been we've been living rent free in each other's heads for a bit now. So um, it's it's kind of like we're either doing like a timeshare thing. Or, um, I don't know, some like weird like Airbnb like cycle or something. Lights and shadows. Hey, I haven't talked to you in a bit. How you doing? Happy birthday. Sorry for the late B-Day wishes. Trader Joe's and Aldi both have a lot of great items. Aldi's coffee is amazing. 
Not sure if you tried it. Like Aldi's brand or the brands they have at Aldi's that they don't have other places. I have not tried any coffee from Aldi's. So I'm going to look into that. Is there one that you recommend? Is there one that you prefer more than others? Let me know. Uh, Michael says on the Anarchy Crew writing Zoom, sorry I missed this. I totally forgot about the date and woke up the next morning and saw the link for the Zoom call. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, definitely be there next time. Trying to be a hero in Los Angeles. Uh, Bookish says, glad you made this. I was worried you weren't human until you humanized yourself in this video. Yeah, well, AI is pretty fucking good right now, guys. Like, this could all be a figment of, I don't know, whatever the fuck. It, it, it's possible. Uh, David Novak, I wish I was in LA right now. I hope that's not facetious. Yeah, it was a pretty nice day. And honestly, I love that... that um, the flowers on that tree look so great. Like that's a really cool, like little thumbnail right there. It just shows beauty and not snow. Adam, what's up, man? I'm digging these vlog videos. I hope so. They're fun to make. Um, it, it's just weird because like when you are in a place that is so normal to you and the things you do, are so fucking average. You just think that no one else would ever give a shit about like just normal shit you do every day. But what we have to realize is, especially if you have a YouTube channel, I would dare say like 99% of the people who watch your channel do not live in your area. So anytime you can give somebody a taste of what life is like where you are, that is going to be interesting to some people. And especially, um, it works a lot better too if any of the stuff you're doing has anything to do with what your channel's about in the first place. That's very helpful. You know what's so funny? I'm bitching about like fucking like getting mangoes and stuff like that. There was a dude on the corner of Alvarado and Sixth yesterday who had a mango cart almost exactly like that. And it was half the price. He wanted seven bucks for a mango cup and he was only taking cash and I only had six dollars cash on me. So I sadly told him to fuck off and I walked up the hill. No, I'm just kidding. I just, I said, oh, and I left. I should have probably haggled with him. I probably could have got it. Kent, what is up? Long time no speak, friend. Thank you for taking us to the beach and making us all jealous of your fruit cup. <laughs> Happy birthday, Matt. I hope you guys were jealous of my fruit cup. That thing was fucking epic, dude. That was so good. Oh, I loved it. Carol! Um, dude, I would be so appreciative of you and that lady at Starby situation. Glad to know chival chivalry isn't dead after all. Well, let me, let me say it like this. I I'm not going to fucking lie. Like, like my first instinct was like, wow, that chick is really gorgeous. Like I should go talk to her. So let's not make me altruistic here, but now I'm trying to think, no, you know what? There have been times when somebody I felt was like being annoyed by somebody else and they gave me that look like and that's the help me look and then I would get like I've gotten up and like said something and shit like that but yeah in that situation I wouldn't say it was chivalrous I was just trying to I don't know try to get some good looking chick to think I was fun for five minutes oh now I feel like a piece of shit Thanks, Carol. Thank you so much, Carol, for giving me a compliment that made me feel like shit and realize self-awareness that um, my intentions are impure. <sighs> Fucking Carol, dude. God damn it. <sighs> I'm just one of those guys. Thanks, Carol, for pointing out my flaws. <laughs> Thanks for pointing out my flaws by giving me a compliment. Oh, Carol. Unbelievable. Let's see, this is from Dan Mills. Thanks for the videos. They've been helpful. And hope you had a happy birthday, sir. Thank you, Dan. And I hope that these are, like, helpful for you. Uh, let's see. Lauren says, great vlog cracking up at... Oh, look. Now there's a parking spot. Oh, yeah. I didn't say anything. I felt too bad. I, I, I couldn't bring myself to um, going, oh... A parking spot just opened up. Couldn't do it. Couldn't fucking do it. Oh, what beach is it? Oh, that was Santa Monica. 
Oh, and we were talking about that. Yeah, that's Santa Monica Beach right there. Um, it's I was by uh, Lifeguard Station 13. It's right before the pier. If you are coming, if you're going southbound down the coast, it's the last Lifeguard Station before the pier. And um, that's a cool little area right there because you have that uh, boardwalk that goes by those awesome like beachfront places. And then it takes you to the pier and then there's a bunch of like restaurants and stuff to do on the pier and behind the pier. And then if you keep going down that um, boardwalk area, you end up in Venice really soon after that. So um, it, it's a it's a cool little area. Yes. And the, I'm going to assume that shit. Yes. And the shit you deal with inspires your poetry. OK, now this is from Tempest Miller. Um, actually, I'm going to come back to this because I want to end on that. So we're going to come back to that in a second here. Um, let's see. Russell666 says, eaten by a fruit cup. Um, yeah, I would have let that fruit cup eat me. I would have let that woman who was, like, making the fruit cup take me home. Like, um, like that was just, like, the greatest thing that ever happened at that moment. Um Michael says, not going to lie, that fruit cup looks amazing, and it tasted even better, guys. Not going to lie. Oh, wait, found this old angry rant vid. Um, always entertaining to see you rip someone a new one. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, free writing workshop, day one, talent not required. Guys, go do that. Um, I came from your stream on Adam Gary channel. Um, love your vibes. I subbed. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Kikor, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna call you a kick. Up top kick. Bam! All right. Awesome. Glad to have you around. And Michael says, Green Room is amazing. Yeah, uh, me and Matthew Buckley Smith, um, brought, he brought up Green Room while we were talking on the new episode of the podcast. Okay, so let's get into this. Awesome, awesome comment from Tempest Miller. So, great vlog. It all circles back to the live stream. Um, yeah, the live stream there at the beach was a lot of fun. Had a burning question. Okay, you guys all know it's good when your question burns. Because the only other thing that burns are gains from working out and um, STDs. You know this is going to be a good thing here. Okay, had a burning question. And I wanted to ask if you ever do another comments video. Here we are. Have you ever encountered, for lack of a better word, psychos slash stalkers through the promotion of your work? Lots of weird, obsessive people online who it, fe it feels us writers have to expose ourselves to. What safety precautions do you take online? Sorry, slightly off topic. This is seriously probably one of the best and practical questions that we could we could talk about here so this is this is fucking awesome have you ever encountered psychos or stalkers through the promotion of your work yes now what i'm also going to throw in here is is that i've had this from both my writing my filmmaking and my music. And the thing about this, this is weird, and this is what I realized today when I was reading this, it's been very different each time. Like the people who were stalkery with my music was way different than the people who were stalkery for um, the film stuff I was doing. And I think that had to do with a couple different things that we'll get into. And then the stuff I've done with the writing has been like different things. And I, like, you'll understand what I'm talking about once I get into details on certain things. It does happen. And so I'm going to actually come back here. Oh, wow. Hey. Hey, everybody. Here's what my face looks like when I'm fucking right up in your shit. What I highly recommend everybody do if you can. And if it's too late, then don't worry about it. Because... What I really recommend people do is do not use your real name if you are going to, like, have any kind of, like, career in the public eye, let's say. I don't know a better way of saying that. 
So that's the first one. The second one is do not ever tie your personal social media in with your business social media or your artist social media. Um, another way of saying this is, is if you have um, any family on your social media, that is no longer a social media you can do business off of. You need a separate social media for that. Okay. And a lot of the reason why I'm saying this isn't so like you're being embarrassed in front of your family. It's to protect your family. Like if you don't want to do this for you, do it for your family. Like they don't, they didn't ask you to fucking start like doing shit in public that could have shit come back on them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that would be the first thing to do. Um, if you do have a separate account for your family and like old friends and stuff like that, make that private. Okay. Make people have to like get in there, you know, and you have to like add somebody and really like look at their shit to find out if that's even someone you want in that part of your life. Now, if you have already fucked all this up and you're already so down the road that there's no real turning back, then don't worry about it. And we'll talk about other things you can do here in a minute. But if your career hasn't really started yet, do some fucking preventive shit right now and like have yourself a pen name or even just like, if you can't think of a pen name, just come up with a different initial. Like, so Tempest Miller, let's say uh, Tempest Miller wants to be Tempest P. Miller for pen name. And now all of a sudden, like, this is a different person. That's really weak, and I would try a little harder than that. You know, it's just, it's something that you might want to do. But the thing that I don't want this to turn into, which it's going to turn into this for some of you, I already know. This is going to turn into the reason why you don't do anything. Well, I got to get my pen name straight, and I got to get my social medias taken care of, so I don't end up with no stalkers. That's not something that's just going to happen overnight. Like, you, you like keep working, keep doing your thing. Do not use this as a reason to not work, but keep that in mind as something you want to do. And if, and the reason why I say, if you already fucked it up, don't fuck with it is because when I have changed my pen name, like it is really hard to get the people who got to you off of one name and move them into your new name. Cause as soon as you send that email out, they're not going to know who the fuck you are and they're going to unsubscribe. Okay. And like a lot of you, you guys do this and it drives me crazy. And I tell you not to do this, but when you um, change your social media handles every five fucking minutes, it's confusing and people will not know who you are and unsubscribe. Okay. Like people need some sort of stability when they're trying to figure out who it is the fuck they're talking to. If you have any other questions about this because you're going through something, send me an email and I'll just write an email to you and we'll talk about it. But don't play into stuff if you think that it's scary. Don't ever give anyone your address if it's not out there already. Don't give anyone your phone number if you could get around it. Use a pen name if you can. I don't know why I went through all of this shit because I, now I'm real. The, the problem that I'm having now is that I realize that I'm talking about this shit while I'm going through this shit with like a few different people right now. Hey, breaking in here to talk a little bit. I realized in sharing personal experiences like this that it might be poking the bear on a couple things. So um, I cut that part of this out and um, I don't know, may, I, I think I might put that up on the members thing and then go into more detail because I, I started talking so like in code about certain things that it like, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not that important. Okay. So, uh, I think the end of this is a little all over the place, but I'm going to try to cut it together to make it work. But, um, hopefully this was helpful. I was really excited to talk about this. And then as I was talking about it, I realized shit, 
maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. So, um, and now back to your um, program that is in progress. Because um, some of the people who have been saying dumb shit to me and sending me dumb fucking emails, um, they're still in the process of doing those things. So um, I don't know, again, talking about poking the bear, I don't know like how... I mean, because, like, having an online troll is one thing. Having somebody stalk you is another thing. Having your you feel like your life is in danger is a completely different thing. Gosh, maybe I should do some videos like this on the members thing. Because this is going to... I can't talk about this shit without getting very personal about the things I'm talking about. I don't know how to, like... Because if I give the situations right now, the person who did the things will know that I'm talking about them. And then that gives them validation and all that other shit. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I should stop talking about this altogether now. But okay, so here's what you do. Have a pen name. Um, have separate social medias. Do not have your private, your like personal life social media be connected to your like artwork, social media, um, get a fucking PO box from day fucking one and everything about your business needs to go through that PO box. Do not ever attach your domicile as a part of your work. Okay. Um, don't ever invite fans over to your house. Um, if you if someone's a fan of your stuff and then you end up hanging out like in public places at events or anything like that and then you build a friendship then that's fine but never just have random strangers that know a lot about you and you know jack shit about them showing up at your house don't fucking do that and then this is always like the um legit thing and i see people never doing this and it drives me crazy if you ever feel that you are actually in danger, do something about it. Don't think like, because all of us artists, we're like, oh no, like we're not that good. Uh, we have self-doubt. You get self-doubt too when you're thinking about these motherfuckers who like are giving you shit. You're like, well, they're not going to fucking do anything. Like now I'm being fucking crazy. Do I really think I'm that fucking amazing that any of these fucking people are actually going to do something? Yeah. Sometimes they'll open your screen and stick their fucking head in. Right. Okay. Whatever. That's a whole other thing. Do not be afraid to, um, report things to YouTube, report things to Instagram or Facebook. Like you need to have a paper trail if you can. And if you feel threatened, call the fucking police. That's what they're fucking there for, to serve and protect. So now they can serve you and now they can protect you, okay? Like, most people who end up, you know, end up like that because they had a bunch of warning signs from somebody and didn't think nothing of it. And then the next thing they know, they're dead, okay? And people go, oh, wow, look at all of these signs. Like, this was obviously going to happen, but they didn't act on it. Like the person who is being stalked didn't think to do these things. So um, I don't know if this has even been helpful. This might have just been a cluster fucking a shit show. But um, yeah, I just, I got a little gun shy there at the end. <laughs> I don't want to fucking like say too much shit. So it does happen. Um, it Like I'm sure it isn't rampant, but you only need one to make you never want to fucking do anything like this again. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just be cautious, be wary. Think about the important people in your life and how the things you do affects them. Um, but if you can just make your art your art and um, keep everything separate, then everything should be fine and you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Okay? So... Thank you for all the lovely comments, everybody. You guys are awesome, and we'll keep doing this. I'm going to go say hello to all of you now. Um, but yeah, keep buying my books. Type hard. Um, hopefully, I will see you guys now that all the stalkers are watching this. I will see you, stalkers, at the fucking Bombay Beach Lit, lit, fet. lit, lit Fest. It's free. It's on Saturday. 
March 23rd, out in the desert. Come buy my books, okay? I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.